I think you've been sitting too long. Please stand up, everyone, just quickly. And then sit down again. <laughs> so I'm Mia Brandin. Uh, I come from a company called Sinatra, and today we will talk about a disease called osteoarthritis and the solution for many of the patients affected by that disease. And why this exercise besides keeping you awake? This is a very common exercise you have to do when you have osteoarthritis. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. You can do it again later. So, who are Sinatra? We're a company developing local injections, um, and the aim of the local injections is to provide a longer efficacy for the active drug, drug connected to our drug delivery technology. It's also aim of giving, uh, taking the drugs that have systemic side effects, and by injecting them locally, we can avoid many of the side effects. So our lead program is called SYN321. It's for the indication symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. And what we've done so far is we've shown initially that we have a sustained release within the knee joint, up to 10 times longer than for free diclofenac in the knee joint. And diclofenac, as you know, is the substance in Voltaren. This is the most potent uh, drug, anti-inflammatory anti drug for osteoarthritis treatment. We have patent protection starting in 2020. I will come back to that later as well. And we are now ready to go to clinic straight into humans, patients with osteoarthritis. So let's talk a bit more about this disease. So we've been talking previously about diseases that can kill you. This will not kill you but there is no cure for the disease, and many people are affected from a very young age. And it will continue and progress throughout your years. Maybe those years when you want to be most active. So you want to treat these patients. It affects more than 500 people globally. And half of these patients getting treatment will not be pain-free. So they will have uh, limitations to how they can move, what kind of activities they can do, how they sleep, because the pain is usually quite harsh in the nights. And this is something we want to change. The market is huge. It's projected to be, uh, in 2030, 15.8 billion US dollars. And why is this? Well, obviously, the aging population, but also num increasing number of sports injuries, etc. So let's have a look at the uh, drug delivery platform and our molecule. This is a local uh, injection. Uh, it's diclofenac, which is covalently bonded to a hyaluronan uh, molecule by a unique linker. So you can see the blue part is the hyaluronan molecule. This is a big molecule, which is good, because that makes it stay inside the joint. Uh, the linker itself uh, doesn't really have any effect. It's just uh, bonding the two substances together. And then diclofenac, which is a small molecule. So if you would inject that into the joint, it would immediately, or within a, a day or two, disappear from the joint. So you want it to stay there and provide its anti-inflammatory effect. So what happens when inside the joint is that through the natural substances in the synovial fluid, the bonds between um, diclofenac and the linker will break. So diclofenac will be uh, gradually released for a long period of time. What is also important when you inject something into the joint is that you don't inject something that's uh, um, not known to the body, because then you will have reactions. And this is what's good here, because also the hyaluronan, which is naturally present in the knee joint, will actually also release, providing viscosupplementation. This is just an additive effect, but the active substance here is going to be diclofenac. So let's have a look at uh, the initial uh, horse study that we did. We compared uh, SYN321, where the, everything is connected, to just injecting diclofenac and hyaluronan. So what happened? If you look to the left, you have the yellow-orange uh, lines. This is 
the free diclofenac measured in the synovial fluid. So within two days, all the diclofenac was out of the joint, so no more effect. If you compare that to SYN321, you could find diclofenac in the joint for 14 days, and this is when we stopped measuring, so we don't know how much longer it was actually there. So this is the proof of sustained release inside the joint. And you may think, okay, but two weeks, that's not so long. But if you compare this to, for example, corticosteroid injections, they are small molecules. You inject them, and you would at least expect like six to eight weeks of duration of the pain relief from them. So the question is there, how long duration can you actually expect? Well, our expectations are that at least three months, but maybe up to six months of pain relief based on SYN321. We have also completed the full preclinical and toxicolo uh, toxicology program for uh, starting our phase 1-2A, which is planned to start next year uh, in Q2. So why is there a need? You may think, okay, there are so many different products here, and you can't cure it anyway. So why is there a need? Well, as I mentioned, 50% of all patients getting treatments don't get enough pain relief. They still have issues. And if we have a look at the, pro the products that are on the market today, or the categories of product, they are all connected to different uh, um, limitations. First of all, the opioids, maybe not so common here in Sweden to use, but in the US, for example, which is going to be the biggest target market for, for us, for SYN321, is widely used. And of course, you get addicted to opioids, you want to avoid those. If we have a look at the corticosteroids that are injected, could give some pain, uh, pain relief for up to six to eight weeks. But on the other hand, in osteoarthritis, the cartilage in the knee joint is broken down. And the effect of repeated use of corticosteroids are known to also break down the cartilage. So it's the opposite effect. This effect we don't see at all in the preclinical studies with SYN321. And of course, oral treatments with anti-inflammatory drugs of different kinds, widely used, even if you get the injection treatments, you can get them on a regular basis. But most people cannot tolerate these products. You get the side effects from the systemic treatment, from the GI tract or from cardiovascular, kidney, etc. And many people have other diseases, so they can't use these products. So, Finally, you have the pure hyaluronic acid injections. Um, a little bit question how long duration you get from it. You get a sort of a lubrication of the joint, which is good, um, but um, that is not enough usually. You need the anti-inflammatory effect as well. So there is clearly a void which needs to be filled. The market potential is huge. Our um, rough calculations give us for the US and, and part of the EU market 600 million US dollars, five years post launch. And we are totally ready to start the first clinical trial next year. The patent side looks good. We have a um, protection for uh, the base compound where we can also attach other molecules and build new projects on, upon that. Uh, and, of course, for SYN321 syn as such. And we've also added some new applications regarding the formulization and uh, sterilization. We can also add indications, of course, for SYN321. And, as mentioned, we can develop new projects with other active substances on the base molecule. And the team, of course, is highly important in this. Uh, I have one of my colleagues with me here today. Um, and we also have uh, Stefan Lomander as a senior advisor here from uh, Lund University, University. And uh, the board of directors also contributing with their very long expertise within the field. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mia. Got a couple of questions for you here. Um, yeah, someone's asked who your main competitors are, but you did, you did go through that, but could you just maybe sum that up and explain how you will position yourself within that landscape? Yeah, of course. 
Uh, I would say that our direct competitors would be the other injectable products like pure hyaluronan uh, injectables, but also corticosteroids. That would be where we would have the sort of easiest catch. But also I would say from the oral treatments. So could this be considered a reformulation, what you're doing? I wouldn't say so, because it's actually going to be as a new chemical entity uh, when we register it. Because the, the different substances are bonded to each other, so it's not only mixed. We also have a question about the financial status of the company, how well financed you are. Well, as a private company doing clinical trials, I would say we always need more money. <laughs> it's a very honest answer. Yes. <laughs> Could a long-term effect mask other knee injuries if we return to the clinical side of things? That's a very good question, but I would believe, uh, I mean, there are majority, the majority is the, the benefits of having a pain relief because then you can actually move and exercise your knee and your muscles so you help with um, managing the disease. And you did mention here that a, your drug delivery platform can be used for, for other indications. What are you looking at specifically and how do you make those decisions? We've just started that work, doing some preclinical testing. We've testi tested attaching antibiotics. Uh, we've tested other anti-inflammatory drugs. So that would be the easiest way. But we also have the possibility to do chemotherapy and adding that. So that's an ongoing project? Yes, it is. It's an ongoing Thank you. So why have you chosen this patient population to start with? Well, the knee osteoarthritis uh, is a huge market, of course. Um, and I mean, it's 80% of the market of osteoarthritis, so it was very natural to start there. And I guess the US is also the natural place Absolutely. to start? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then will you go for EU as a second market, or were you only thinking the US? We're, for we're planning to do it in parallel. In parallel, right. Thank you. So as a final question, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, what kind of feedback you've had from key opinion leaders and uh, from the profession? Yeah, from, from the discussions we've had with uh, physicians in Europe, but also in the US, they say everything that's better than what we have is good. So please bring it to us because there is a huge need for better products and especially to avoid the side effects of what's there and the addiction side of opioids, for example. Right. Thank you so much, Mia. Thank you.